moving right along. Got a little stiff little wire brush there. Got one of these style wire brushes. Got a little pair of cutters. Another big twist drill. Another what looks like either lightly used or never used tap. Again, with really fine threads. This is a Tapco USA. This is a 7 56 tap. Look at this wrench. Kind of like a spanner wrench. Special, well, that's for something special right there. This is a uh, number 482 Armstrong 2 inch size. I wonder what that's for. I wonder what kind of tool that would go on. Or what I mean what I meant to say was I wonder what that was for loosening. He had it in his tool cabinet there. I wonder if I'm gonna come across something that I need that on. Ah, there's a big tap. Bet you that cost a few bucks. This is a thirteen sixteenths dash twenty tap. So it's more more along what I am used to seeing, I should say. An interesting brush. Somebody beat the bejesus out of it. Four of these precision screwdrivers. I've actually got some of these. I like these screwdrivers. Uh, tips on these are not too bad. A little chewed up. Not bad. I'll add those to the ones I already have. Another countersink. That little double end mill. So, what do you call that? Center drill? What do you call that? Put that in to uh, make your starter hole so your twist drill follows in. Right? I think that's what that is. And then, what the hell is that? Is that another one that's kind of broken on the end? Yeah, it looks like the end's broken off on that one. Here's a small one. I found this aluminum nut. It was in the cabinet there, and judging by the fine, super fine threads I see in there, it looks like that's probably what that what one of those taps was used on. A lonely 5 16 inch wrench. And a little chuck with the key in it. Is it a Jacobs? 3 8 It is the Jacobs. Hmm. Boy, these these guys, whatever they were building, some of the stuff must have been really small. Here's a little Richards Micro Tool Incorporated Plymouth Mass Micro Series. These look like those little center drills. And they go down to 31,000, 25, 20. All the way down to ten thousandths, but that one's missing. And Fifteen thousandths is in there. I mean, th these things are tiny. And there's a bunch more in here too. There's these aren't as small, but they're small. So it looks like these are all double-ended end mills, only really small ones. I don't know what these are. Some weird little 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 tiny end mill. I don't know. These things are small. Oh, well, it's been ground down. Anyway, now we're approaching normal sizes again. This is a three sixteenth, four flute. That's still really small. And, uh, that one. It's a long the long one in there. Three packs of exacto knife blades. Well, actually, two packs of regular blades. What are those blades? Oh, those are straight cutting blades for exacto. Huh. Here's one that's container. 
quarter inch by three quarter inch by two and a half inch for flute ultra tool ah finally carbide little quarter inch by quarter inch for flute MV B sphere BE carbide I wanted to take that one out just to see. Well, now I know why they say it's a sphere. A little ball end on it. So that would be for making like a, a groove with a rounded bottom. And this is another one. This is a 3 8 version of the same thing. But it looks like I think this is a, yeah, this is a two flute. 3 8 inch carbide. Looks brand new. Ah, somebody was ordering from McMaster Car. What's in here? Two little, uh, oh, carbide. Number 360 degree carbide CD slash CS. Oh, okay. 60 degree center drill. CD must be for center drill. I wonder what CS is. Carbide. Nice. Looks like it's never been used. The so number two and a number three. Then, candle. I'm sure he wasn't lighting a candle to the patron saint of uh, machining. This must have been, he must have needed wax or something. Uh, somebody with experience might be able to tell me exactly what, uh, what a machinist would use wax, candle wax for. And then what do we got here? Ah, we got a brazed cutter. A little uh, kenamental. Oh, that's a nice little cutter. Now, is that for a lathe? Or would you stick that in a boring bar? Oh, that's it's like a lathe. And we just got some miscellaneous nuts and bolts. We can take those, the ones that are good, and throw them in the hardware drawer. And then we got these millers right here, these little funky ones. Get that one there. Is that for uh, dovetail? This one here. That one's sharp, I'll tell you. And another one here. This one looks actually, this one looks like it's unused. Found an empty tube, then I found a little blue cap for the tube, and now I just found this little double ended end mill. Yep, fits. All right, what do we got here? Four flute, single end, one inch shank, long length, high speed steel. Yeah, it's a big one. Uh, yep. Hmm. This is a high speed steel, so I'm assuming you can regrind these. Now this big one. The operator put aluminum only, so I guess he didn't want anybody just grabbing this and doing any old thing with it. It's a two flute single ended one inch shank. That basically just looks the same as that one, it's just a little bigger. I'll tell you, that's an interesting container to open that one up. You're going to unthread this thing all the way to get it out. Hmm. Niagara cutter, Diag double angle cutter. One and three eighths inch diameter, sixty degree angle. So that must be a dovetail one, right? Oh, that's another one of them suckers. Then we got another one of these R eight Arbor deals. This one's got a big cutter on it. Four inch by eleven thirty seconds by one inch. Korea high speed steel. Here's another load. This looks like it's got the wrong thing in it. Oh, he's got two in there. Well, I got plenty of these. So counting these two, that brings the total to seven one and three eighths inch diameter sixty degree cutters. This one says it's a Woodruff KSC shank. High speed steel key seat cutter. 
So I'm assuming that's for cutting a groove for a woodruff key on a uh, on a shaft. These all have uh, regular end mills in them by the looks of it. Four flute, two flute, two flute, six flute, three flute, seven eighths inch, single ended. This one's empty. It's supposed to have a four flute single end, three quarter inch shank. That might be one of the ones I might be one of the ones I already put down there in the draw. Ah, found it. Marked right on there. Niagara 35324, 1 HSS, which must mean it's 1 inch. It doesn't say what the shank is, but looks like that's 3 quarter inch. This says general purpose, but the EDP 35324, that must be the part number. That's a little chipped up. Alright, I'm almost to the bottom of the first bucket, and uh, that's this is the bucket that I had most of the cutters and end mills in, so the uh, other stuff's not going to be this, uh, not going to be cutters and that, unless I put some in inadver inadvertently put some in the other buckets. Hmm. Reduced shank 3 flat SND high speed steel drill. Huh. So. It's a twist roll, but on the shank, it has three flats ground on it. I wonder what the deal is with that. Looks like it's in excellent shape, though. Well, this box is currently empty. It says it's an S&D half-inch shank, high-speed steel, black and bright. Okay. Three-quarter inch, whatever it is. Another two flute cutter it is an 11 16th inch counter bore. Something I'm not gonna read that. All right, put the label out here. This is the high speed counter bore or spot facer, straight shank interchangeable pilots, short set by the Mill Millersburg Reamer and Tool Company of Millersburg, Pennsylvania. This is 11 16th. It's an interesting little uh, deal here. It's you see a set screw. Okay, so oh, I see. There's a hole, and so I don't know what that's supposed to be for. But that looks like that snapped. Okay, it snapped off. Is that a drill? Is that a pilot drill bit that's supposed to go in the center here and held in by that set screw and it snapped? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it's a shame. Another what looks to be almost brand new drill that looks like that has not seen any action. 